deaths, and they want those deaths to have meaning. Absolutely. What would you say to someone when you met them, when you would meet them and say, I lost a son or a daughter or a, or a husband or a father in Afghanistan or Iraq, given that you said you want to get out? Well, look, the, uh, Afghanistan uh, is the war we have to win. Uh, and uh, I have always been supportive of the war, war in Afghanistan. In fact, one of my objections to the war in Iraq was that it distracted us from finishing the job of going after t the Taliban and bin Laden, those who killed 3,000 Americans. What about uh, Iraq? In terms of the war in Iraq, look, uh, when our troops serve, uh, they are always uh, uh, performing uh, a service to this country. And, uh, you know, the, the fallen, they never fall in vain uh, when they're serving their country. Our troops have performed magnificently. They have done everything that's been asked of them. Uh, and uh, the fact that Saddam Hussein is no longer there, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, they have given the Iraqi people an opportunity to uh, self-govern. Uh, my point is that the, uh, the Iraqis have to take advantage of that opportunity. They haven't. Uh, it has now been five years since we went in, uh, and uh, that means we've been there longer than World War I, World War II, or the Civil War. It is time for us to now go ahead and finish uh, uh, our mission, uh, and what that means is a orderly withdrawal out of Iraq, uh, renewed diplomacy, both with the factions in Iraq and um, uh, the surrounding countries. And if we do that, then uh, I think that we can stabilize the situation and uh, refocus our attention on Afghanistan. Uh, but uh, you know, the, the flaw in Iraq has never been the performance of our troops. They've performed magnificently. It's been, I think, uh, a failure on the part of the civilian strategy uh, to think through uh, the consequences. You have, uh, NAFTA has cost North Carolina um, more than 30,000 manufacturing jobs. You said that you want to make fundamental changes to NAFTA. What change would you make to keep jobs in North Carolina? Well, uh, the changes I want to uh, make uh, go beyond NAFTA. We, we've got to, uh, first of all, stop giving tax breaks to companies that ship jobs overseas and give those tax breaks to companies that are investing here in the United States of America. And I've had a, uh, a piece of legislation, the Patriot uh, Corporations Act, that uh, I introduced when I first got to the Senate. Uh, this is an idea I've been talking about since uh, 2004. I think it's very important for us also to make sure that we've got trade agreements that uh, have labor standards, environmental standards, and safety standards. Uh, that's something that NAFTA didn't have, CAFTA did not have. Uh, and when you don't have those standards, what happens is companies here in the United States are very tempted to say, well, we can save money just by not only having cheaper labor, but we don't have to uh, abide by environmental standards. And, uh, you know, they're not as strict in terms of safety standards. Uh, that's why we end up getting lead-based paint in uh, our toys. Uh, and so we've got to change that. Uh, we also have to work directly with China so that they're not manipulating their currency so that they're opening up their markets. Uh, they're not subsidizing uh, their goods, state-owned goods that are being dumped uh, into our country. Um, but you know, having said all that, trade's here to stay. The global economy is here to stay. And so the most important thing we can do is to create new jobs and provide workers new skills. And so investing uh, in green technology jobs. I want to spend $150 billion over the next 10 years for a Manhattan project, an Apollo project. Just like going to the moon, we're going to make a, a more fuel-efficient car. We're going to develop solar, wind. Uh, we are going to make our buildings more energy efficient. That can create millions of jobs all across the economy. Uh, I want to invest in infrastructure, which makes our economy more competitive. Roads, bridges, laying broadband lines in rural communities. And I want to give uh, the opportunity for first-class education to every child and for uh, you know, the non-traditional student, I want to make sure that they've got the financing to go to a community college and uh, retrain uh, for the jobs that we're creating in the future. You've talked about North Carolina um, is a right-to-work state. Mm -hmm. You 
said a number of times that you think people should enjoy the ability to join a union. Right. Uh, not too far from here, there's the Smithfield pork plant where workers want to organize. The company's been difficult. It's gone to federal court, which has ordered elections, but the sides can't agree on the method. What, what do you think needs to be done there? Well, I'm a supporter of the Employee Free Choice Act, uh, which would say that if you've got a majority of workers who've signed a, a card uh, saying they want to be part of a collective bargaining unit, uh, then um, then that should be respected. It, you know, it's become very difficult to organize unions because uh, companies uh, are pretty sophisticated in delaying, stalling, intimidating, uh, making it very difficult for uh workers who want to organize to, to get organized. And I think that uh, we've... we've uh, Is that something though, that the administration needs to have a harder stance on? This particular administration hasn't well, made this, this a cause. Th this administration uh, is anti-union. Uh, it's not simply that it needs to have a stronger stance. It, it uh, deliberately, I think, has undermined uh, many of the rules and regulations that would make it possible for uh, employees to organize. And so uh, we're going to have a different philosophy when I'm president. Thanks, Don. All right. One quick question. You, you, got, you came to Fayetteville. There was some criticism about the vet that it wasn't open. What's the chance you'll be back to Fayetteville? Well, you know, the I don't know what our schedule is. Um, you know, we're always trying to balance. When, when we open the events, then we end up with uh, what we have today, which is 8,000 mm -hmm. people. And, you know, it's very difficult to do a question and answer session or to deliver a, uh, a lengthy speech. Uh, it, uh, with uh, uh, with a, a complicated topic like Iraq uh, in front of 8,000 folks. Uh, so we're always trying to mix it up, rallies, town halls, you know, uh, substantive policy speeches. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be able to at least get in the vicinity. We're going to be campaigning actively uh, here in uh, North Carolina uh, over, the next, uh, over the next few weeks. All right? Thank you very much.